Expansionist China is now looking at the skies. It has revealed plans to drastically expand on experimental weather modification program covering an area of more than 1.5 times the total size of India. China has long sought to control the weather by seeding clouds. The process works by injecting small amounts of chemicals like silver iodide into clouds causing them to precipitate. The technology has been used to create artificial rain and snow, but the massive push ostensibly for domestic use is sending alarm bells ringing in India, especially in the context of the recent conflicts across the line of actual control. There are fears that weather modification could potentially give China an edge, hampering troop movements in the mountainous regions. We spoke to environmental security expert Dr. Dhanashree Jairam earlier. Listen in to what she had to say. Okay, um, so China's weather modification system, which they have been working on for a really long period of time. So this is not new that the state council has now released a statement which says that uh, by 2025, they're going to cover an area for cloud seeding and also hail suppression, a relatively lesser amount of area to cover hail suppression system. But at least for the cloud seeding, uh, creating rainfall uh, that kind of a system they are trying to put in place by 2025 and by 2035 they are expected to advance it to such a level that they would be uh, leading the world in terms of cloud seeding geoengineering schemes. Uh, so this is what they are planning according to the latest statement of the uh, uh, state council that was released a couple of days ago. Uh, but like I said, this is not new. They have been trying uh, these kind of technologies uh, for a really long period of time. Uh, since, uh, 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 you know, China is a country that is also very much uh, susceptible, vulnerable to changes that is that are happening in the climate uh, that are uh, basically also creating a sense of insecurity among the Chinese as far as the impact of climate change on its agricultural sector, uh, other sectors that are dependent on water. So as you know, the northern parts of China are comparatively arid and semi-arid, while the southern part, especially the Tibetan plateau, uh, is extremely uh, uh, water rich. And therefore, their idea is to kind of uh, transfer the water from the southern parts to the northern parts, which are uh, facing a lot of water scarcity. Uh, so by weather modification, they're they are trying to, uh, they're trying to, for instance, uh, transfer water um, uh, from the Yangtze River to the Yellow River. Uh, I, as you know, there are also there have been also plans discussed by the Chinese previously with regard to uh, the South-North Diversion Project. How much of it uh, has actually become uh, uh, fructified or how much of it has actually materialized is still, still questionable, considering the fact that the Chinese are not very transparent when it comes to sharing data and information regarding their large-scale projects. Uh, now, these kind of geoengineering projects uh, are, in fact, uh, uh, are in fact uh, uh, something that the Chinese have invested in for a long period of time. And of course, now they must also be looking at uh, solar radiation management, carbon dioxide removal, those kind of uh, projects which are uh, much more alarming than the cloud seeding kind of geoengineering projects. But the scale of the project itself, as discussed by uh, China, is something that is alarming because uh, of the kind of uh, impact it could have on the ecosystems, it could have on the neighboring countries, especially with the monsoon patterns being affected. Um, and of course, the rivers which flow down from the Tibetan plateau to, to the, uh, South Asia and Southeast Asia, uh, you know, and the populations living in these regions are entirely dependent on, uh, on these rivers. So some of these uh, questions are still unanswered. And uh, China being China, you know, uh, they have a tendency to carry out some of these unilateral measures, which can, of course, create uh, some sort of conflict between the countries as well. So, yeah.